Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're going to get into the degenerative space of NFTs. Now, do I think they're all bad? Of course not. There are some really good projects out there which we'll discuss in today's video. But overall, it looks like we are getting to the tail end of this absolute mayhem hysteria of NFTs. Now, this could go on for another week, two weeks, a month. We just don't know for sure. And prices could escalate a hell of a lot more. But essentially, this is the riskiest time to be getting into anything like this. So if you're new to trading, new to cryptocurrency, then maybe you just want to watch what's going on, maybe play with a little bit, not financial advice. But overall, this is the riskier part of the cycle. And another reason why I think Ethereum still has a little way to go until it pops off. Basically, once these profits get taken in from all of these NFTs, from the DeFi, from the DEXs, you know, the list goes on, then this all has to shift somewhere. And essentially, a lot of people believe it'll shift to Ethereum and potentially Bitcoin as well. So we're going to discuss all of that, look at a ton of NFTs and go through a few charts to update you guys on these NFTs that I've talked about recently and Litecoin. Yes, it's not an NFT, but Litecoin needs a quick update along with Cardano and potentially Reef. So long intro, but if you love the sound of that, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. It goes a long way to helping the channel out. Let's see if we can get to 100,000 subscribers in the month of March. If you do enjoy the content and you find some value from it, which I'm sure you will today, hit that like button down below. Let's get this video to 3,000 likes. Apart from that, let's dive into the video. So first thing I've got here is what we're looking at from my videos in the past few weeks. You guys know I've been talking about exit strategies. Is it time to sell? I do get a lot of uh, criticisms for selling cryptocurrencies. End of the day, you want to make profits. Now, the the distinction here again, remember, is a trading bag and a long-term hold bag. Long-term holds are the stable stuff, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano to a degree, and there's probably another few in there which you guys absolutely love. The degenerative trading stuff is, in my opinion, definitely NFTs. They spike hard, they dump hard. You can go back and look at DeFi. DeFi did exactly the same thing. Oracle projects have done a very similar thing, except for the major ones like Chainlink. So finding these real major ones, which will go a long way, different story. Uh, decentralized exchanges, pumps and dumps. So it happens across the board. This is just a natural, normal thing in cryptocurrency. So I really want to play down that hopium and that hype, but pay a lot of attention to how risky this part of the cycle is. I posted a poll just uh, 40 minutes ago before I make making this video. Uh, what's your favorite NFT crypto bag to shill at the moment? Comment below if it's not on the list. So. Uh, check out my community posts if you guys want to be involved with those. We can look at projects altogether. Essentially, I use it like Twitter. Okay, so here, Mana is well and truly up there. Chili's is crazy up there. Uh, maybe people are just buying in now with Chili's, which I think is super risky and not a good move at all. Not financial advice. Uh, Rari and TVK, which I've talked about on the channel before. There's a few other ones in here like Engine, which is really good too. But remember, we want to pay attention to the charts and what's going on there. So we're going to look at that in just a moment. First up, fear and greed index. Greed is relatively low-ish compared to where it was during January and February when we had those huge spikes in Bitcoin. And then, of course, the, the dumps, which only lasted about two to four weeks. Currently, Bitcoin is testing all-time highs again, but the fear and greed index doesn't show uh, Bitcoin or doesn't show the, the greed index being up at 93 to 95 where it was during the last peaks of the Bitcoin price. So you can see here it was sitting around 94 and we had some resistance around that 93, 94. So it's, there's still a fair way to go until we reach this extreme greed. I think that could be a good sign we have a little way to go. But in terms of gains, which is why I always talk about a selling strategy and exit strategy, the gains are getting narrower and narrower the further we go up, it's just common sense. It's just maths. And so the risk uh, increases a lot more. So you're still going to make gains. People are like, oh, well, Cardano can go to $3. Sure, it can go to $3. It's sitting at $1 now. Are you really in it to risk that much, risking a lot of capital just to make the 200% return? 
that's usually not the game in cryptocurrency, which I don't think a lot of new people really understand. You're probably here, you wanna be here getting 500%, 1000% because of how risky it is. You could lose 80, 90% of the value. So you really need those big multiples to balance out the big losses. Cardano, different story. I know I talk about it a lot and you guys think I'm talking FUD. I don't know what you're on about there. Looking at Google Trends, Cardano is on the drop. We saw Cardano well and truly up there in that last week of February and the top hit on the 27th of February. Guess what? The top of the Cardano price was the 27th of February and now the energy has just flattened out of Cardano. On the 13th of March, two weeks since that point and Cardano has fallen. So let's look at uh, NFTs which are just dramatically on the rise. They are as high as NFT searches have ever been and they're getting very close to the search volume for Cardano. Can you imagine that? The search volume out there past 12 months worldwide, NFTs are almost at that peak search criteria that Cardano was for the week that it led up into its all time high. Think about that and how much people are looking for NFTs at the moment and think about a week or two from this point with NFTs. If NFTs take a little bit of a turn, what happened to Cardano? Sure, it's fallen a little bit, but I think NFTs will fall a hell of a lot more than Cardano. Cardano is a, we know it's a solid project and it just needs some time to cool down. So the other thing I've got here is Litecoin. Litecoin has had a couple of double peaks and it's fallen away again. We'll look at that in the charts in just a moment. Cardano first on the charts, it has continued to fall away from the, the videos when I was putting back here on around the 3rd of March and a little earlier on the 27th of Feb, which was that absolute top. Uh, we have broken under a dollar and bounced just above it, but the volume is still down. Volume's still down. We're going to get to NFTs in a moment, but important to just get uh, go back across Cardano because it's something that we have covered a lot of on the channel and looking for a, another re-entry point for some of those profits, remember? Remember we're not, well, personally, didn't sell out of the whole bag, a lot of it because I felt and saw that this sort of fall was coming. If I don't buy back in, I'm okay. I've still got uh, a bag there, but ideally I want to see this come back down and test the 50% level around 80 cents. Call me crazy. You guys will say it's never going to get there. It's being staked, etc., etc. I've heard it all before and I'm sure if you stick around long enough, you will hear it all before as well. And you go, hang on, why didn't I just open my eyes at the time? And that's what I'm seeing here on Cardano. We've looked at the rest of the Cardano charts uh, many, many times. Uh, Binance has been down, Bitcoin has been down. Here's a Bitcoin chart, it's still down, dropping, dropping, dropping. A lot of Bitcoin value lost, currently 45% lost. Uh, Cardano versus Ethereum, again, this is what we want to prevent if we're ever in some sort of degenerative project. Not Cardano, but I'm talking about NFTs. This is a very clear example of what can happen if we buy the tops of NFTs. And uh, look at that, down 44% against Ethereum. USD at $1.06, which you just saw, and it's uh, trending down against Polkadot as well. So let's move across to coin market cap before we come back to the charts for some of the NFTs. And I wanna run through a lot of these. Essentially, I've got about uh, 10 or so projects there, and we're gonna have a quick look at the charts, the market cap, understand circulating supply against fully diluted market cap as well, so the full circulating supply, and just try to pick which ones we should invest more time in to research as opposed to trying to get into all 10 or so of these projects. So there has to be some criteria that we go through so that we can save time because stuff is moving so quick and then focus more energy on those to figure out which ones we should be investing in. Now, of course, this, there's no hard and fast rule to it, but it's just a guide and just acknowledge that you're probably never gonna get this 100% right. That's just the way it is, but I'm sure there'll be gains in, in something here. So overall, market cap is at 1.7 trillion. We are trending very, very high here. Ethereum 200 billion, nearly gonna say a million, but yes, it's in the billions. And what we've just seen recently is Chili's go bananas. And I really thought 50 cents was gonna be a high. We saw it spike into a dollar and now it's back down at 75 cents. So Chili's is really, really going hot. Maybe we are coming to the end of the NFT craze. Let's take a first look at uh, this token I have here. I've got G-Swap, I'll have a look at that in just a moment. Shroom Finance, Sandbox, mentioned by you guys. Um, OMI, O-M-I, E-Commi, 
I've got engine coin. <clears throat> Looking at engine, sorry about that. Engine, look at these charts. This is the main thing I want to bring up before we have a look at the circulating supplies and the market caps. These are just spiking out of nowhere. Oh, well, we could see them coming, but when we look at these spikes, these aren't the, the markets that I want to chase. The uh, engine, like I talked about on the channel, uh, I put on a community post about a month ago. You can go back and have a look at that. There was just a first announcement from a Japanese computer games company, something like that. And that really got them started in the space. And then people were like, wow, engine's going to be something to do in NFTs. Yes, it's a good gamble, a good play against NFTs. And uh, so from that point, or at least December, it's 13 cents. I think that point was around 20 something cents or 30 cents. Then we are now hitting about $2, just over $2. So a solid 10x through that time, probably even close to 40x. It's gone nuts. Market cap, taking into consideration that, of course, uh, $1.8 billion, fully diluted $2.1 billion. This is about half the market cap of Chili's at the moment. Uh, next one here, people have mentioned uh, Chromia. Look at this, guys. $0.07 cents with a, within a, a week, $0.70. Cents. All right, sure, this could double again, right? But if you didn't get in at $0.07, cents, you're not making those am amazing, amazing gains. If you're getting in now, right, at $0.70 cents, and this thing doubles to $1.40, it sounds amazing. And I'm repeating this a lot because a lot of people get sucked into that trap. And they say, well, it's, it can still go to $2. It's like, if you, get, if you get in now, it doesn't matter if it goes to $2. In my opinion, I want to go find, this, find the things that are somewhere around this area that I could get 5, 10, 20x from. I'm not that interested in going from 70 cents to $2. It's, it's great. But if you got in here, great. You know, it's, it's way, way better. That's the whole point. I want to um, send my capital to those coins that, are, that have that sort of potential. Market cap is 300 million already. I don't know what Chromia does. It was just mentioned that it's part of the NFT space. Like we said, we're trying to find stuff quickly that could look like there is better potential to go towards it. And for me, Chromia is definitely not one of those ones on the list. Sure, this could go to 3 billion, and I'll just keep going around in circles when it comes to this 5x, 10x sort of thing. If it goes to 3 billion from here, then yes, that was a great crypto to invest in from a $300 million market cap to a $3 billion market cap. And, uh, you know, it's a good uh, nine or so X on that coin. Uh, th for this to go to 3 billion, it has to be just under Chili's. And I don't know if Chromia would get to that status of Chili's. So looking at Chili's, look at that. It's just straight up. So just coming back, uh, where are we here? In, in March, just a week ago, 10 cents. Now it's at a dollar. It says 75 cents, but we know it hit a dollar. And the market cap, $4 billion, fully diluted, 6.6 .6 billion, really throws it up there. Uh, I'm ranking everything against Chili's as well. So that's kind of the look here. You know, Chili's is the leader in this. Engine's well and truly up there between two and four billion. Do these other projects that we're looking at have that potential? That's really what I'm searching for here. Rareable, now we're starting to get somewhere closer to something that could represent that. Will it get there? I honestly don't know. The, the, the amount of energy that's there that needs to come across to these projects is, uh, it, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of difficult, is really what I'm saying. There's a lot of built up energy that has already been blown on Chili's, on Engine, on Decentraland, <clears throat> excuse me, which we can see, uh, I've got it over here. Uh, that's audio, which have a look at. Decentraland. Decentraland has skyrocketed as well, probably got a lot more in it. And it's just, do you think that all of that built up energy can move across to those other smaller caps and really give those a big push? Uh, that's the unscientific part to all of this. So that's what we have to play with as well. Are people going to be burnt out after getting burnt from Chili's? I'm sure there are going to be a ton of people that get burnt from Chili's. There has to be, mathematically, there has to be a ton of people that get burnt from Chili's, that get burnt from Engine, that get burnt from Decentraland because they're buying the top. They're buying someone else's bags that they bought down here and then someone else has to buy up here. And so these people are probably going to get burnt and they won't have enough money left. They'll sell out. Maybe they'll try for something else. The, the guys who, are, who have bought up here 
and, uh, bought down here and are selling up here, are they going to risk another bag on some of these smaller projects like we were just looking at on Rarible, Rari, you know, R-A-R-I. Are they gonna do that? Because this is sitting at a market cap of 28 million, but a fully diluted market cap of 830 million. So keep that in mind as well. Fully diluted just means that there is a whole lot of coins, a whole lot of tokens, any of these cryptos that are being held uh, from other addresses. Maybe it's part of the founders, the CEOs, some early investors that can't release the tokens just yet. And there will be a tokenomic uh, schedule of when these tokens will be released. So then we have to go and find that step as well. So that's part of the checklist. What is the tokenomics for something like Rari? Are they going to be dumping these coins on the market in the next month or in the next 12 months? So that leads me to uh, TVK, which is something we've covered on the channel just recently at about, I'd like to say 40 to 60 cents. Currently it's sitting, sitting at around uh, 90 cents. And this has a very small market cap of 70 million, not the smallest, but small and a fully diluted of nearly $1 billion. Now, from looking at the tokenomics on this, I know that they're not coming out, well, a, 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 quite a few of them aren't coming out till the end of the year. There are a couple of addresses which aren't selling till December, which could hold a big bag. We've got to do a little bit more of a deeper dive into this. So that's what makes up the difference here. We don't want to see this fully diluted market cap come onto the market now, because that would just absolutely squash the price you know, it would send it to zero. And I'm sure these big holders wouldn't do that because it's not in their interest to do that right now. You don't want to scare the market off. You want to build up demand. You want to get this price uh, up to probably into the high hundreds of millions or low billions so that they can sell out onto the market. And that's what will dump the price. But for now, TVK is looking pretty good. And you can see this chart here. It's just climbing its way up. There are big gains that have been had from three, four, five cents all the way up to where we are now, 90 cents, or 80 cents, but there are some big addresses that haven't sold out yet. So that's that's another piece to the ever complicated puzzle of how to trade these and not get sucked in at the wrong times. So TVK is a big one on the list, which you guys who've been following the channel know of. So looking back at a couple of these other cryptocurrencies, we have the likes of GameSwap, and another one here that I like to look off is uh, Shroom Finance. And I found these from Twitter. If you guys want to know, I don't do Like I have to go and look somewhere else for research just like you guys do. And then I'll d dive deeper into them. So Josh, I've followed him since 2017 on crypto, uh, on crypto Twitter. And he's got a couple of tokens here talking about G-Swap and Shroom. Uh, sure, engine is good, but people are getting in an engine at 1.5 billion. That's what we just talked about. We know that over and over again. GameSwap and Shroom Finance are sitting at 17 million and 34 million market caps with decentralized exchanges release coming soon along with Alpha being dropped in the next few weeks. So even at half of Engine's market cap, that's a 30 to 15x gain for these two cryptos. That's why these look a hell of a lot more appetizing than getting into uh, it was Omi and some of those other ones out there that we just looked at. Look at this one, GSwap. 16 million market cap, fully diluted, 38 million. So about half of the supply is out there. The chart, not so bad. It, it is breaking through some resistance and it's coming back. So a dollar fell to 60 cents, currently sitting at a dollar 80. That's, uh, it's still early days for this sort of token. Now I have no idea what G-Swap does. I've just seen it on a tweet or on a news article. The coin price looks good. The market cap looks good. The fully diluted market cap is okay. These sort of things are checking out. Check, 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 check. And now I can go do more research into these projects. Can they do it? Is there enough demand that would drive people to this? Do they have a good marketing team? Can this do it within this small period uh, until the, the, the basically the energy runs out of it, which is something we talked about in the previous videos uh, around can these projects continue to, to pump you know, like, does it still have enough left in the tank in this uh, stage of the market? And how many times are we going to get that pump? So G-Swap is on the list. All right. That's where we're at. TBK, G-Swap's on the list. Shroom, at a dollar, uh, it started back down here at around 10 cents, 8 cents. So it has moved a hell of a lot. But the market cap still 50 million and the fully diluted 64 million. We don't have any of those crazy numbers where there's a huge amount sitting in someone else's address, you know, in their wallets. Most of the supply 
is out on the market at the moment. And that's a, that's a pretty good thing here. So I like that. I'm going to continue to research more into Shroom. So I'm presenting these to you before I've actually gone out and bought them. I have not bought these projects here. All right. I've bought TVK, but none of these other ones I have bought. And there is the pros and cons to that. I need to do more research and they might not be good. The, that's the con for you guys. The pro to that is I haven't bought them. You know, and obviously you have to take my word off this, but I haven't bought them and I'm not pushing the price. I don't think I have an audience big enough to be able to push these prices anyway. So that's that's what I can say about those. Anyway, looking at the sandbox before we begin to wrap up and have a look at Litecoin as well. Uh, sandbox, this was the one that was mentioned in the community post on YouTube. $400 million market cap with nearly $2 billion fully diluted. So if this was to get to half of engines market cap, engines are almost $2 billion, half of that's $1 billion, this really can only double from here. Sure, maybe triple. It's not really that big of a deal. So if you're holding it and you bought it down at these levels, then you're doing fantastic. But if you're coming into the market and someone's spruiking Sandbox, S-A-N-D, at these levels, you probably don't have that much more room to grow if you're looking for those 10, 20, 50 baggers. And that is what I've talked about in the previous videos on how to go from 1,000 to 100,000. It's simple maths, but the mindset and understanding charts is another layer to the whole puzzle. And as you can see, it's not difficult things. If you've been following the channel, we talk about all of these strategies. None of these strategies are difficult. It's just many, 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 many layers within a very, I guess, easy to action plan once you understand the layers. So overall, they, are the cryptos that I've got on the list. I'll do a, an update video around um, some news going forward because I think this video is long enough at the moment. I want to take a look at CoinMarketCow because this comes up a lot for Litecoin. Mimblewimble. So that's it for NFTs for now, okay? Let's have a quick look at Litecoin and what it's going to do on the charts and what's going on. Mimblewimble, code review. Mimblewimble, it's, it's hot on, the, on, on this page here. A lot of votes, uh, a lot of views, high percentage. It's significant, it's trending. But in the grand scheme of things, Litecoin really isn't out there trending too much. You can see it's on the decline. So that's not a positive sign, although it is being looked at in terms of um, uh, like calendar dates coming up. So let's take a quick look at Litecoin on the charts because it was one that I honestly thought would begin to explode at some point. I look at it in terms of US dollar and it keeps going up against US dollar because Bitcoin keeps going up. All right, if you don't understand that, go and review some of the other videos. Basically, we want to be measuring these projects against their Bitcoin value and their Ethereum value because otherwise we want to reduce our risk. And since our first videos in January, which were around this 0.00, 3938.004. So this is uh, against Bitcoin, uh, Litecoin versus Bitcoin value. It has only seen a few little bumps and continue to fall. Although it looks okay now after this big spike yesterday, it is trading at uh, recent lows. This is very bad. It's very low. It's not what we we're expecting from this. And this is one of those projects that has completely underperformed everything else, unfortunately. So Keep that in mind if you are thinking about loading up bigger on Litecoin. I know that there are a few viewers that watch other channels that talk about Litecoin a lot. Maybe that's you guys. You, you watch other channels which talk about buying Litecoin. And I do think at some point it will explode. It's just that's what Litecoin does every cycle. It will explode like this and then you have like, well, you don't have to. You don't have to do anything. But I, if it was me and it, what I will do is sell out. It just sell this crap. Litecoin continues to dump and dump and dump. And then eventually you get a really, really, really big push. And then it continues to do the same thing, just dump. So Litecoin against Bitcoin, it looks like it's going through something like this again. This pattern that happened through 2015 into early 2017. Spiked for a few weeks to a few months. And then it was over again until it did it again, over again, did it again. And now it's just been dying ever since, ever since 2019. So it's probably due for that big spike sooner or later. And at that time, it's just get out, show over, rotate those profits into something else. And uh, that's pretty much done for Litecoin, in my opinion. If you want to hold this thing forever, you go ahead. But that's what I see Litecoin good for. It's almost like a Dogecoin. And honestly, they work together. So 
why not? You know, it looks like it does perform very similar to Dogecoin. So in that sense, boom, spike it out, move it on, get more pro, get more Bitcoin, get more Ethereum, go and be degenerates on NFTs altogether and make some big coin. All right, guys, we've covered a lot in today's video. We looked at the Cardano price. We looked at a lot of NFTs. Let me know what your thoughts are on that. And uh, we can go into that in a little bit more detail because there, I did cover a lot of projects, a lot of step-by-step uh, -step processes that I go through in order to find something that works. And I know it can be very confusing if you're new to the space. So if you wanna know more about that and how to trade and invest, rotate the profits into other asset classes, including stocks, property, and other cryptos, which are the same asset class, check out the Investor Accelerator. The link is down below. There will be a price increase later this month, and there is still a discount on that as well if you're interested. 12-month membership to learn how to trade and invest. There is a course, Structured Videos. Uh, the guys who are in the course, we have over 200 people now. Fantastic, everyone is loving it. So yeah, you can get into the group and talk with people there about all of this stuff going on in crypto and investing. I'll see you on Instagram, live, daily Q&A, nearly daily, basically every second day, I'm getting as much in as I can to give you as much value, just takes time, that's life. And also post my retirement fund portfolio, which you can check out, Bitcoin and Ethereum over on my Instagram. So go and check that out already. Like the video up if you found some value from it, down here, 3,000 likes, can we get there? And we're nearly at 100,000 subscribers, which is absolutely amazing. So thank you very much for all of your support. Hit the subscribe, bell notification icon does help the channel out a lot. That's it for today's video. I'm gonna get into more news tomorrow, more NFTs, more everything. Everything is still very, very hot at the moment. Coming towards the end, so stay safe. Stay safe, as they say. And until then, I'll catch you at the next video. Messed up the ending, doesn't matter. Until then, have more fun to get more done. Peace out, guys.